You see the title here, The Wind Rises. The Wind Rises is, needless to say, an excerpt from Paul Valery's poem. Paul Valery's poem. The wind is rising. We must try to live. If you see down here, Miyazaki intentionally uses the translation of the novelist Tatsuo Hori instead of the original text. This quote, the wind is rising, we must try to live, is introduced in the prelude of his novel with the same title, The Wind Rises. It's a long paragraph, so I made it a lot shorter. This first part means, the wind has risen, but we must go on living. It goes, the wind arose and the easel with my unfinished painting collapsed. I said, please, please don't go and clung on to you, and you let me have my way. Just then, the words, the wind is rising, we must try to live, came out of my mouth. So everything starts from here, and needless to say, this prelude provides the structure for the film, the wind rises. In Tatsuo Hori's novel, the Iso collapsing is a sign that his lover is going to die. The protagonist is basically saying, please don't leave me. He pulls the woman by the arms, and the woman surrenders and lets him do as he wants. At that very moment, the words, I must go on living, slip out of his mouth. That is roughly the story. You see, once you understand the meaning of it, you can tell that the scene where Nahoko's Iso collapses in the wind at a plateau in Karuizawa is the portent of the death of Nahoko. Miyazaki made this clear in the scene, but to understand the scene, we have to interpret the poem properly. He assumed that some of you would pick this up in the first few seconds of the film. If he just wanted to quote Paul Valery's poem, he would simply have said, written by Paul Valery, but he intentionally added translation by Tatsuo Hori. That's because Miyazaki wanted to tell the audience that Hori's novel is the basis for the film. Well, yes, but how would you know? Of course, it's hard to know as usual. Anyway, there's this book called The Sequel, Where the Wind Returns. On page 234, Miyazaki starts to speak his own mind. People who don't understand, don't understand anything, they are uneducated. They don't have any sense of history whatsoever. They know nothing. Sheer ignorance, unprepared and uneducated. It's hard to even imagine. I'm pretty sure I worked harder when I was young. But then he rethinks that statement and concludes, but I guess I didn't study all that hard. Takahata was the only one that studied. So there's a weird punchline. Yes. Miyazaki is an outright left-wing progressive. He expects people to know these things. When he's interviewed, he often says, everybody's so uneducated, they should all go to hell. But then he says, but when I think about it, Takahata used to say the same thing to me. So it's all pretty harmless. So this excerpt from the novel is a metaphor. Of course, you don't have to know all these things in order to enjoy the film. But since Miyazaki is quite clearly indicating that his audience should have a certain minimum level of education, we should at the very least do a little bit of work and attempt to view the story from his vantage point. You'll discover so many things once you make an effort, just a little adjustment. When you look at the film bit by bit, one frame at a time, you'll discover so many things and it's just so much more interesting.